Boy, I hope that I don't screw this up because this is an important topic. Hi, everybody. I am your Uncle Squiddy, Paul Schalbetter, coming to you from the Dank Basement here in southeastern Minnesota on this Saturday, October 5th, 2024. How are you doing? I want to talk a little bit about the chemistry of nasal snuff. We'll talk about things that get added to nasal snuff and why. We'll explore a couple of health risks of using any form of tobacco. And I'll talk a little bit at the end about accidental chemistry, things that can happen with particularly older tins of snuff. Now remember, I'm not a chemist. In fact, I barely passed high school chemistry when I took it back in 1846. So uh, you should do your own research as always, but this is what I know. Okay, first of all, let's talk about nicotine and what it does to the body. Nicotine is a vasoconstrictor, which means it shrinks the diameter of your blood vessels. It also increases your heart rate. This causes an increase in blood pressure. Therefore, if you suffer from even treated high blood pressure or have a cardiac condition, you probably ought to talk to your healthcare professional before using any form of nicotine. And that includes gums and patches and vapes. Talk to your doctor. Now, doctors are by nature anti-tobacco, but they should be able to give you the right answer about nicotine. Nicotine also is purported to be addictive. Here comes Betsy with coffee. Thank you, Betsy. You're very nice to me. So anyway, uh, getting back to the chemistry of tobacco, one recent use for chemical nicotine, whether naturally or artificially derived, one brand of snuff in particular, Snuv, S-N-U-V, sold by MrSnuff.com, some of their herbal snuffs have nicotine added to them. This worries me on a personal level because I am not sure of the purity or quality of that nicotine, and I say that for this reason. Nicotine in the United States comes in a couple of grades, and the highest grade is USP, or United States Pharmacopeia grade, medicinal grade nicotine. That is what gets put into patches and gums to help you quit smoking. However, there is also nicotine that is used as pesticide. And early manufacturers of e-liquid in the vaping industry were known for using crap quality nicotine. It is not necessarily safe. And if you can find out, you should find out what the grade of nicotine used in your vape particularly is. I have no idea what quality of nicotine is used in the Snuff brand, and I don't want to speculate. Chemicals do get added to nasal snuff for a couple of purposes. pH balancing, that's a big one. Bicarbonate of soda or baking soda. <coughs> I'm sorry, sodium bicarbonate. Um, there's also calcium carbonate that gets added in the fermentation product, particularly for black snuffs particularly for black Indian snuffs. I do not believe that either of these substances in the quantity in which you will find them in the snuff are particularly harmful. But again, I am not a healthcare professional. We have to talk a little bit about nitrosamines. It's the reason that, one of the reasons that tobacco is not good for your health in any way, uh, but one of the biggest problems with tobacco is a carcinogen, which is called nitrosamines. Nitrosamines are particularly common in anything that has been dried, cured, or cooked over open flame. If I cook a big, fat, juicy steak on my barbecue over charcoal, I am getting nitrosamines, and they are carcinogenic. If I smoke cigarettes, it's not just the tar, it's not just the nicotine, but the burning tobacco produces nitrosamines. Same thing with pipes and cigars. Depending on what kind of snuff you're using, particularly toasts or fire-cured nasal snuffs, 
those are going to bring a higher level of nitrosamines than just snuff that has been dry cured, air cured, whatever. The tobacco has been air cured. So you should watch out for that and remember that that is the reason I say nasal snuff may be the safest form of tobacco use, but no form of tobacco use is 100% safe. All right, the last topic, the last part of this topic is let's talk about some accidental chemistry. Thankfully, I have not an example to show you. However, I have noticed this with Wilson's tins, not the old school Freiburg and Treyer tins. I have noticed this with McChrystal's tins. I suppose it could happen with even the tins used by Toke or Samuel Gowett. But one of the things that can happen is the aluminum in the tin can rust. That creates a substance called aluminum oxide. It is a white dust. If you see a bunch of white dust when you open an older tin of snuff, especially from the manufacturers I just mentioned, look for that white dust. And if there is that white dust, you don't want to insufflate uh, aluminum oxide. You, it's, why? Aluminum probably is not real good for you to sniff up your nose. So if you do have that white dust at the top of your pile of snuff inside the tin, and if the inside of the lid appears to be to the touch rough, and you notice that it's turning white instead of silver, that's aluminum oxide, throw the tin, please. It's, it's okay to lose the four or five bucks. Just throw the tin, you do not want to. It worries me as a blind snuff taker because I can't see the white powder. And it is a bit risky for me because I am occasionally opening older tins of snuff, particularly to show on camera. So that's it. Uh, I got a very good question. Again, this was from Dan. I do not remember now which chemical he uh, asked me about in particular. I had never heard that that was in nasal snuff, so I couldn't really answer that for him. But there is chemistry involved with the making of nasal snuff, and you should know what you're taking into your body. Right. Again, you can always consult the manufacturer if you're concerned about a particular chemical and they will give you an answer, I am quite sure. From the Dank Basement, I hope you are enjoying your Saturday, October 5th, 2024. Keep sniffing and have a lovely weekend. God bless.